There's been enough progress where I've decided to do another update for the Pilot Flying J DC Fast Charger build. Before I do so, I just want to mention there appears to be some tribalism occurring in politics as a result of the election year where Republicans are saying EVs are bad and Democrats are saying EVs are good. So I don't watch the news that much, but there was some kind of flash that showed up on YouTube with the secretary of something something getting grilled by a Republican and because he's a Democrat or so. Anyway, for the record, I'm a Republican EV enthusiast. I would prefer if the government would just stay out of the whole EV situation. EVs are going to be fine. They're faster, they're quieter, they're more reliable, and they're more convenient if you can charge at home. It's just a better product. They're going to sell themselves. Really no problem. The price is dropping. We've either, either hit price parity or we're below price parity at this point. There's all these new models coming out below median car income and everything. EVs are going to be just fine, and it'd be great if the government could just stay out of it. Not only um, are they more reliable, faster, more convenient, and quieter, uh, it's also better for the country if you could fuel using domestically produced energy. So for all those reasons, I'm an EV enthusiast. And I guess they're also better for the environment. I guess there's some kind of debate about that. But regardless, um, I'm an EV enthusiast just because I like not having to wake up on a Tuesday morning with some kind of mystery fluid on the floor of my garage where I have to hand my car over to a mechanic for three days after which they tell me it's going to cost $800 for blank, diddy, blank, blank. Doesn't exist in EVs. Plus, I never go to gas stations anymore. I'm going to get off my soapbox. Let's get to the update. Um, there's a couple of things about the pricing, but before that, let's talk about the new sites that have opened. Uh, right here, there's two, one in Winchester, Virginia, and another one in Pittston, Pennsylvania. Pittston, Pennsylvania is southeast of Pittsburgh, and <clears throat> the one in uh, northern Virginia is close to the border with West Virginia and Maryland. Also over here in Texas, a place called New Canny, which is northeast of Houston, is a site been spotted under construction for quite a while, and it finally opened. Um, before we get to the new spotted under construction, let's talk about price. Okay, so there's a lot of variability and the trend of prices adjusting by exactly a nickel is continuing. Basically, almost every single site that is open has had a price adjustment as, as of uh, the recording of this, either up or down by exactly a nickel. The new average price for the network is... 62 which is just about the same as what it was before the high price is down to 81 cents still at castleton on hudson smithton pa which is the new one it has the new lowest price at 45 cents per kilowatt hour and let's talk about this clean technica article because it touches on the cost of dc fast charging pricing and how it's affecting the um, adoption of electric vehicles as a whole um, so there's a picture of the uh, gm location this is in knoxville tennessee the author, Jennifer Sensiabi, Sensiba, I'm not quite sure how to pronounce her last name, and I apologize for mispronouncing it. Uh, she writes quite a bit for Clean Technica, and I actually like her articles. Uh, she does a good job of being very candid and honest and transparent with what she writes. Talks about a location that's an Electrify America, which is charging 64 cents per kilowatt hour, which is a little bit higher than the average price of the Pilot Flying J locations, and how it costs more to travel electric on road trips than it does for gas, almost twice as much, which is true. If you're going to have an electric vehicle and you're expecting to save money on gas and you don't have a means of charging at home, it's not a thing. You're going to lose money. Uh, it's going to cost more to fuel your vehicle using just DC fast chargers. Now you can knock that down a little bit if you get into a plan and so on and so forth, but um, she says the solution is increased utilization. So she believes, and I, I would have to agree with her looking at what's going on with the pricing, and I'll get to that in just a second. She believes that as more DC fast charger utilization occurs, it will drive the price down because the cost of the equipment is going to be offset by higher utilization and it'll drive the price down. And also there'll be increased competition, so on and so forth. So I'll put a link to this article down below in the description. It's a good read. Feel free to go over and check out Jennifer's article in Clean Technica. So what I'm seeing, and I'll get to the table in a second, is that there's a 
great amount of variability in the pricing. And I was thinking maybe it was time of use pricing. You know, maybe I was capturing these prices during low times and high times, but it's not because some of the prices are going down, some of the prices are going up. It's about half and half. And all I could assume is that they're just doing their normal business practices where they assess the cost and then they do a price adjustment on a weekly basis or something like that. And let me just show you some of the crazy changes that are occurring here. Where was it? It was these two. One went down by a nickel, one went up by a nickel. And they're right across the border from each other. And there's, let, let me go to the two in Arkansas. No, not the two in Arkansas. I'm sorry, the two in Missouri. These are a good one. They're on the same interstate in the same state. However, from the last time I did this update, one of them went down a nickel and one of them went up a nickel. Doesn't seem to make sense. All I could assume is that somewhere in Pilot Flying J, someone is assessing the cost and they're doing a periodic nickel price adjustment up or down. That is apparently what's going on here. And I don't see any time of use because I was speculating perhaps it was time of use adjustments, which means that electricity costs or, or dispensing at these stations costs more during the peak hours than it does during off hours. That's basically what time of use pricing entails. But it's not because I looked up the pricing like very early in the morning and it was the same from the peak period the day before. So it doesn't appear to be time of use. I'm going to keep checking that, but that doesn't appear to be the case. Okay, so now let's look at the new spotted under construction. There's a couple of new updates here. Two in Utah. One of them is a Nevi site. Uh, this one up here on the top is a Nevi site. And then this one over here, uh, I don't believe is a Nevi site, but that has been spotted under construction. Uh, let's see what has been spotted under construction as well. Oh, yeah. Um, I think it's this one. No, that's Tifton. Uh, there's one in the middle of Georgia, and I think it might be this one here um, that was recently spotted under construction as well. We'll see that down in the table in just a second. And just you know, I, I have a slide deck which I run at the end of these updates that shows all the canopy locations, both open and spotted under construction. And I also go through and I update those photos when new photos are posted into PlugShare or I receive them from other locations. I actually receive photos from multiple different locations, one from LinkedIn, one from PlugShare, and sometimes people just directly send me photos. Uh, so those that slide deck gets updated when I get new updated photos. This is what the 200 are gonna look like by the end of 2024, assuming that we hit 200. There are 27 weeks left in the year. There's 152 left to open. That means 5.5 per week or six per week, basically now at this time. Uh, that number is correct though. It's actually 5.6 per week, but I'm just leaving it at 5.5. And we are now at 9.6% complete of the 500 locations. So this map here is 200 locations, but they've actually stated their goal is 500 locations. So that looks more Actually, we don't have a map of what the 500 locations look like, but it's a lot of pin drops. And of the 500 locations, we are very close to 10% complete because we have 48 done. And I will go through these tables slowly for people who are new to the updates. The way it works is these are sorted by time zone from north to south. So let's look at the eastern time zone. And all these prices have now been updated, obtained through the Pilot Flying J app just a few moments ago. The new sites are Smithton, Pennsylvania on Interstate 70. It's got the lowest price in the entire network of 45 cents per kilowatt hour. And Winchester, Virginia, I have a site visit video which I'll link down below in the description for anyone who wants to go take a look. I actually got the site visit video before it was open. I missed it by about a week. Harrisonburg, Virginia is a honorable mention because it's got 47 cents per kilowatt hour is in second place for at least expensive in the in the network. Smithton was not a Nevi site. So this column here is whether or not there are funds being dispersed from the federal government Nevi program or not. <clears throat> okay, so the eastern time zone I can't fit on the screen all at in one picture. So I'm going to scroll down. 
This is what the bottom half of the Eastern time zone looks like. Again, all these prices have been accurately updated. And if you look at this number right here, what this is is the final tally, and then I do it for each time zone, and then I divide by the number of sites to obtain the average. So that's just my clerical math there. You could ignore it. Okay, central time zone. Newly opened is New Candy, Texas, which has been sitting idle for a long time, and thankfully it finally opened. 57 cents per kilowatt hour is not a bad price. It has a nice canopy. I'm waiting for an updated photo, so right now I still have the older photo in the slide deck. And nothing new in the mountains or Pacific time zones. Spotted under construction, we have 44. And let me go back, and th there's something important that I want to mention. It was unfortunate that Ben's Eco Adventure went to this location, and it was listed as open on the apps, both EVGO and Pilot Flying J, and he drove there in his Chevrolet Bolt. When he got there, there were cones in front of the dispensers, and a sign on this dispenser saying not available or not operational or something like that, which basically almost stranded him according to the plug share location. And I know this is a new CPO, but they cannot have their app say that there is a active charger at a location and then have someone show up and, you know, put a sign on it and cones in front of it saying, hey, this is not available. You, you, can't, you can't. And I really feel for Ben. He was pissed in his uh, plug share post. And I agree with him. If I had traveled all the way to Winchester, Virginia from my house, which is a good six, seven hour drive, and I was expecting to get um, a charge there and it was showing green in the app and all of a sudden I had to do a pivot and go to like a level two location or something, I would have been pissed too. So he definitely has my condolences. And if anyone out there from Pilot Flying J is listening, please don't list your sites as open if they're not operational. That is a big heartache for anyone who's driving an EV. Okay, spotted under construction. 44 locations are spotted under construction. So if you throw that on top of what we currently have, let's see, that would be uh, 90 what, 96, something like that? So we're getting close to halfway, the, the uh, ability to claim we're inside of halfway through with the 200 locations for 2024, and we're at the halfway point of the year. So as long as they keep on this pace, conceivably they're going to make that 200 mark. Um, YouTuber Yield Traveler pointed out that the location in Beaver Dam was listed as a pilot, but there's actually two locations on that accident, and he says it's the Flying J across the street, so just a bit of a clerical error there. Um, Greensboro, Georgia, newly spotted under construction by Chris C. I just found that this morning. The one in Lebanon, Indiana might not be EV charging. We're still waiting for some pictures there. Um, but you can see Ohio has just got an enormous amount of NEVI funded locations spotted under construction. Basically everything that is NEVI awarded in the state of Ohio is under construction and very close to being completed. Central time zone, sort of north to south, nothing new. Emporia, Kansas, this will be the first one in Kansas and part of the westward shift that we're hopefully going to see that I mentioned on my last update. Hopefully that is actually occurring. And we see these two locations out in the west starting to um, go under construction, one of which, as I mentioned, in Snowville is a Nevi site. So hopefully the Pilot Flying J crews are starting to shift to the west because they've really been pounding away at the east coast on the 95 corridor and into the uh, Midwest. Definitely Ohio is, is blowing up. And hopefully soon the uh, Weed California location on I-5, which is in Northern California, will flip to open pretty soon. According to all accounts, it has their uh, transformer on location and uh, the canopy is built. Everything else has already been spoken of. I'm not going to rehash those on this update. I'll save that for another one. And again, stand by for the uh, slide deck showing canopy sites both open and spotted under construction. Thanks for watching.